Welcome back to Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by Patriots expert columnist for WEEI.com, Christopher Price. Chris, there is a nip in the air. Maybe it's appropriate because the Patriots offense, as you wrote about this week, in the third quarter, it has been ice cold. What gives and how can they fix it? It's across the board. It's, it's not just one thing. Tom Brady has struggled, at least statistically, in the third quarter. They've struggled to run the ball. They've also not really played what you'd call complementary football in the third right. quarter. The defense has struggled as well. So it's a combination of things. Uh, Bill Belichick talked a little bit about it in the press conference today, talked about the fact that there's really no magic bullet that you can take, you know, and you can say, okay, these, this is how you fix the problem. It's got to be across the board. You've got to have better blocking, you've got to have better execution, you've got to play better defensively. You mentioned uh, in your piece that they, I believe, ran the ball only two times in the last 10 minutes or so of that game. Mm -hmm. We have said all along, I mean, I wrote about this after the first preseason game in Philadelphia. Are we finally <laughs> beginning to see maybe the return of the running game to the Patriots? And would that be crucial? Well, it seems like in, in some of the losses this year, namely in Cincinnati where they ran the ball only six times in the second half, Sunday uh, in New York against the Jets, they're getting away too much from the running game. They really are. I think it's one of those things where you, where you look at the complete offensive picture over the first seven games of the season, and you can kind of draw some conclusions. And in the losses, they've abandoned the run, I think, too early. I think it's you know, your point, what we were talking about earlier in the media workroom, that they only ran the ball twice. Uh, over the last seven minutes and not at all in overtime against the Jets. They only ran the ball six times in the second half against the Bengals. This despite the fact that it was a, it was a one-score game on both occasions. You know, the, the game was still in doubt. So, you know, there were situations where you could run the ball. The, the run-pass splits in the losses are really damning, I think, in a lot of ways. I think the Patriots have to get back to running the ball. They have to get back to running the ball consistently because when they do that, good things happen for this offense. And the thing that's really hard to understand and really get a grasp of is they have the running backs. They have a lot of do. variety do. in the running backs in terms of Stephen Ridley, LeGarrette Blunt. They will be getting back eventually Shane Vereen. Uh, he is eligible to start practicing this week, whether he does or not. Belichick said that uh, he wouldn't start on Wednesday, but mm -hmm. maybe later in the week. But the, the personnel there is there for the Patriots to get to the running game. I wonder, too, how much of that might change with the return of Vereen. I wonder how much they think of him and what, what kind of regard they hold him in, that, that they might start running the ball a little bit more when, when they when he comes back because in his one game this year they were very run heavy and that opener against the Bills they were able to run the ball they were right. able to move the ball consistently as a result uh, and that's no slight no disrespect to the other running backs that they have but I think he offers them something that maybe some of those guys don't have but yeah I think ultimately they need to get back to running the ball they need to get back to running it consistently if they want to have a chance to play deep into gym. And the other thing we, we should also point out, it is only week number eight, I believe, we're coming up on in the season. And uh, Bill, uh, Tom Brady has always mentioned, Bill Belichick has always talked about, judge us in November and December when the weather really changes. Exactly. And, and a lot of the, uh, uh, the, the fundamentals of the offense change. Exactly. This, more than any other season, maybe other than 2006, this offense is really a work in progress. Now, we've talked about that specific to the passing game, but I think you can make an argument for that in the running game as well because Vereen, they're kind of working without one of their most important offensive options in Vereen. Like Garrett Blunt is still in his first year in the system. You're talking about Brandon Bolden and Stephen Ridley, two other guys who are very young, relatively young, relatively early in their NFL career. So it's all kind of coming together, I think, at this point. Defensive side of the ball, the Patriots welcome back an old friend and certainly one of the more uh, respected players in the locker room a couple of years ago, Andre Carter, defensive end. He played last year with the uh, Oakland Raiders after uh, blowing out his Achilles uh, against the, uh, I believe it was against the Redskins in, in 2011. Oh, the, the Broncos. Oh, the Broncos, the Broncos in, in yep. 2011. Yep. Yes, thank you. Um, but certainly he was a big uh, part of that defense mm -hmm. in creating uh, pass rush from the edge. Can he approach those kind of numbers and that kind of impact here in New England, or is it too early to tell? I think it's too early to tell, but I do think that they brought him in here for a couple of different reasons. First of all, unless you're Brian Waters, you know, you're not a 34-year-old guy who's getting off the couch and going right. to be jumping in to play 95% of the snaps. I think you're looking at him to maybe give you 15 to 20 snaps a game, at least at the start, to really kind of work in as a situational pass rusher. Maybe give uh, Ninkovich and Chandler a little bit of a breather in those kinds of situations. I also think, too, that he was brought in here as a mentor for a relatively mm. young defensive That's line. Point. When you're talking about guys in Vince Wilfork and Tommy Kelly, who in Wilfork's case is really not around the team on a regular basis because of the injury, Kelly's working through his own injuries. Right. This is a really young defensive front. 
You're talking about guys like Michael Buchanan, Chandler Jones, Jake Beckett, Marcus Forston, Volano, Chris Jones. All of those guys are relatively young when you're talking about overall NFL experience. You, you're bringing a guy like Andre Carter who can kind of you know mentor him a little bit and, and, and work as a you know, work as a guy who can kind of take him under his wing a little bit. And I, I think that's what we're looking for when, when you're talking about his overall impact. I think it's going to be almost as important off the field as opposed to off. We talked about this a little bit after the Jets game uh, on Sunday afternoon. The AFC East is all of a sudden very jumbled, and this uh, suddenly becomes a very critical game in the division and one in which the uh, Patriots certainly uh, figured a need to protect home field if they're going to want to win the division in the end of the season. The Joe Philbin-led Miami Dolphins started out 3-0, house on fire. Everybody thought maybe this is the year the Dolphins challenge the Patriots. They've lost their last three. What, what has happened with the Dolphins? They need to get back to what made them successful. They need to get back to running the ball. They need to, you know, Tannehill's a good athletic quarterback. The other thing, too, is they have not been able to protect him at all. Tannehill is on pace to be sacked 69 times, That's which a lot. is absolutely <laughs> absurd when you're talking about you know a second-year quarterback. You need to do a better job protecting your quarterback. I think that's where the Dolphins have really kind of gotten off track. I think this represents a great opportunity for the Patriots to create some separation in the right. AFCs and kind of rebound a little bit from what happened last week. They can beat the Dolphins here, and the Bengals can beat the Jets in Cincinnati, which is not unreasonable to expect given the Bengals' quick start. I think you're looking at a situation where the Patriots can put a little bit of separation between themselves and the rest of the AFC East and rebound from what happened last week in North Jersey. And going into the bye. Exactly. You know, you always want to feel better about yourself going into the bye. If they hit the bye week at 6-2, and two, right. given everything that's happened and given all the setbacks that they've had, the personal setbacks, the injuries, you go into the bye week 6-2, and you've got to feel pretty good about yourself because then you start to get guys back. You start to get Vereen back, ostensibly uh, Amendola. You know, will hopefully return sooner rather than later. So you have guys coming back. You're six and two. You're sitting in first place in your division. You feel pretty good about where you are going into the second half of the season. So what happens Sunday? I think the Patriots win this thing. I, I think that the Dolphins. There's still a lot to like about this young and really hungry Dolphins team. I think they're headed in the right direction, but their inability to protect the quarterback, combined with the return of Rob Gronkowski, is looking like he's going to be back to at least close to 100 percent. I think that's going to be the difference. I think New England wins this thing by 10 points. And you think Rob Ninkovich and Chandler Jones meet at the, and Michael Buchanan meet at the quarterback a little bit? Yeah, they do. I, I just think that the Dolphins' inability to protect that pocket over the course of the first six games of the season and going forward, I think it's really going to be, it's going to be problematic for them because, again, this is a really poor offensive line that Miami has. I think the Patriots can exploit that. That's a winnable matchup for New England. Patriots are 5-2, and two, still in very good shape uh, in the AFC East uh, and in first place, of course. The Miami Dolphins come in at 3-3. Three and three. Again, it'll be an interesting matchup because of what could be for the Patriots if they can come out on top on Sunday afternoon. He's Christopher Price. I'm Mike Petralia at Gillette Stadium, weei.com.